I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Greetings and salutations in the name of our Lord. I hope you're having a fabulous day. It's my coffee. I'm Paige. Welcome to another episode of Coffee, the Bible, and Paige. I apologize that the live Facebook live feed didn't work today. Facebook sometimes is kind of persnickety. So we'll just record this and I'll upload it and you'll get this later on today. Uh, there was no devotion yesterday because my wife and I have become... Uh, the proud owners of a new puppy, a miniature poodle. Her name is Lady Madeline Elizabeth Garwood. And uh, I had puppy duty all day yesterday because Glenda had to work. And so I had to stay home and play with a puppy all day long, starting at 6 a.m. Holy mackerel. She's glorious. And if you want to follow us on that story, you can find me on Facebook and there'll be pictures and all that kind of stuff. Anyway. Today, we're going to continue our story with uh, about uh, Abraham's family, and now we're going to be focusing on Jacob and Esau. And I've always had some curious thoughts about this, and I I didn't understand the big deal about the birthright. I didn't understand the big deal about the blessing, and I really didn't understand how. Isaac managed to, I mean, how Jacob managed to fool his father Isaac and then making him think he was Esau. But hey, we'll get into that. Let's get to our story. It's chapter 27. And here we are. When Isaac was old and his eyes were so weak that he could no longer see, he called for Esau, his older son, and said to him, my son, here I am, he answered. Isaac said, I'm now an old man and I don't know the day of my death. Now then, get your equipment, your quiver and bow, and go out to the open country to hunt some wild game for me. Prepare me the kind of tasty food I like and bring it to me to eat, so that I may give you my blessing before I die. Now Rebekah was listening as Isaac spoke to his son Esau. When Esau left for the open country to hunt game and bring it back, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, Look, I overheard your father say to your brother Esau, Bring me some game. And prepare me some tasty food to eat, so that I may give you my blessing in the presence of the Lord before I die. Now, my son, listen carefully and do what I tell you. Go out to the flock and bring me two choice young goats, so I can prepare some tasty food for your father, just the way he likes it. Then take it to your father to eat, so that he may give you his blessing before he dies. Now, there's division in this household because... Isaac prefers Esau, and his wife Rebekah prefers Jacob. There, this isn't a perfect family. This is not your beaver cleaver, leave it to beaver type family. So uh, Rebekah hatches this plan to fool her husband into giving the blessing to her son, Jacob. Now, I'm, I'm always curious why. And uh, we'll, we'll get into what the difference between the birthright and the blessing is here in a minute. But uh, I'm just, oh, I'm kind of disappointed in this family at this moment. The mother is playing a game against her husband. Hmm. Jacob said to Rebecca's mother, but my brother Esau, he's a hairy man. Well, I have smooth skin. What if my father touches me? I would appear to be tricking him and would bring down a curse on myself rather than a blessing. His mother said to him, My son, let the curse fall on me. Just do what I say. Go and get them for me. She's willing to be cursed. 
by her husband. The, the divisions in this family are pretty deep, it looks like. So he went and got them and brought them to his mother, and she prepared some tasty food just the way his father liked it. Then Rebecca took the best clothes of Esau, her older son, which she had in the house, and put them on her younger son, Jacob. She also covered his hands and the smooth part of his neck with the goat skins. Then she handed it to her son, Jacob, the tasty food and the bread she had made. He went to his father and said, My father! Yes, my son, he answered. Who is it? Jacob said to his father. Now, Jacob's in. He's all in now. He says, I am Esau, your firstborn. I've done as you told me. Please sit up and eat some of my game so that you may give me your blessing. Isaac asked his son, How did you find it so quickly, my son? The Lord your God gave me success, he replied. This is pretty telling to me. He didn't say the Lord my God. He didn't say the Lord, our God. He said the Lord, your God, gave me success. So I'm thinking neither Jacob nor Esau have bought in to their parents' faith at this point. Then Isaac said to Jacob, come near so I can touch you, my son, to know whether you really are my son Esau or not. So Jacob went close to his father Isaac, who touched him and said, The voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And yet he's still fooled. He did not recognize him, for his hands were hairy like those of his brother Esau, so he proceeded to bless him. Are you really my son Esau? he asked. I am, he replied. Then he said, my son, bring me some of your game to eat, so that I may give you my blessing. Jacob brought it to him, and he ate, and he brought some wine, and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, Come here, my son, and kiss me. So he went to him and he kissed him. And when Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he blessed him and said, Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. You can see his fondness for Esau in this blessing. He thinks it's Esau he's blessing. May God give you the heaven's dew and earth's richness, an abundance of grain and new wine. May nations serve you and peoples bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers, and may the sons of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed, and those who bless you be blessed. After Isaac finished blessing him, and Jacob had scarcely left his father's presence, his brother Esau came in from hunting. He too prepared some tasty food and brought it to his father. And he said to him, My father, please sit up and eat some of my game so that you may give me your blessing. His father Isaac asked him, Who are you? He said, I'm your son, your firstborn, Esau. Isaac trembled violently and said, Who was it then that hunted game and brought it to me? I ate it just before he came. And I blessed him. And indeed, he will be blessed. When Esau heard his father's words, he burst out with a loud and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, me too, my father. But he said, Your brother came deceitfully and took your blessing. Esau said, Isn't he rightly named Jacob? That's deceiver. This is the second time he has taken advantage of me. He took my birthright. And now he's taken my blessing. Haven't you reserved any blessing for me? I'm going to stop right here. Birthright blessing. What's the big deal about the birthright? Well, the person, usually the firstborn male in that culture, when when the patriarch dies, the firstborn male takes upon himself the position of the, as the patriarch of that family. He, to him will go all the judicial power to making decisions And he will become the leader of that clan, that family. He's the patriarch. Now, that's that's the birthright. Do you remember the scene where Esau was hungry and he told Jacob, make me something to eat? And Jacob said, well, then give me your birthright. What good is my birthright to me when I'm starving? Esau said, it's yours. And Jacob gave him food. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, so two brothers having a conversation. How will that hold up legally within that context, fines of that family? Well, we're going to find out here in a minute that Rebecca has servants that are listening 
and reporting to her. And that's obviously what happened that day, that there were witnesses to what in effect became a legal transaction where Esau was passing his birthright to become leader and patriarch of the family to Jacob. So apparently that there was enough witnesses that witnessed that to make that a legal thing. That's my thoughts on that anyway. Now, here's some other thoughts I have that I pulled out of some commentaries and stuff because I was really curious about this birthright blessing thing. Jacob offered to give Esau a bowl of stew in exchange for his birthright. That means the right to be recognized as firstborn. And Esau agreed. The birthright has to do with both position and inheritance. By birthright, the firstborn son inherited the leadership of the family and the judicial authority of his family. That's a big deal about the birthright. While a birthright belonged to the firstborn son, unless it was apparently sold or given away, anyone could receive a blessing. In the time of the patriarchs, these blessings acted as a last will and testament and were highly prized as a means of revealing God's will. So, our equivalent of this blessing is our last will and testament, where we write down our thoughts and wishes and desires for succeeding generations, in particular, the next generation. So my equivalent of this blessing would be a will in which I would declare to my son and my daughter what I wish for them and what goes to each. So Isaac answered Esau, I've made him Lord over you and have made all his relatives his servants and I've sustained him with grain and new wine. What can I possibly do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, Do you have only one blessing, my father? Bless me too, my father. Then Esau wept aloud. His father Isaac answered him, and it's very prophetic. Your dwelling will be away from the earth's richness, away from the dew of heaven above, You will live by the sword and you will serve your brother. But when you grow restless, you will throw his yoke from off your neck. Now Esau held a grudge against Jacob because of the blessing his father had given him. He said to himself, the days of mourning for my father are near. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. When Rebekah was told what her older son Esau said, now how could she have known? Her servants had to have heard this and reported to her. It's probably her servants that heard the previous birthright discussion and reported to her. Uh, She is, she's in this fight to bring Jacob to preeminence, not Esau. Your brother Esau is planning to avenge himself by killing you. Now then, my son, do what I say. Flee at once to my brother Laban and Haran. Now, pay attention to that. Laban's going to show up and we talked about him before. It's going to be important. Stay with him for a while until your brother's fury subsides. When your brother's no longer angry with you and forgets what you did to him, I'll send word for you to come back from there. Why should I lose both of you in one day? Then Rebekah said to Isaac, I'm disgusted with living because of these Hittite women. If Jacob takes a wife from among the women of this land, from Hittite women like these, my life will not be worth living. Well, we know for a fact that Esau had already taken wives from the Hittites. He had two of them. We heard about that earlier. And apparently, Rebecca was not happy with this. And, you know, this is, a, she wants her son, Jacob, to have a wife who is not from the peoples that surround them, but is from the people they came out of. And so she's already making plans to send Jacob back to Laban, her people, their people where he will get a wife from there. That's that, that's the underlying thought here. So, a lot of stuff to cover, but I'm disappointed with Jacob. I'm disappointed with Esau. I'm disappointed with Rebecca. And I'm disappointed with Isaac. Um, this is not, this is a pretty dysfunctional family in many ways. Yet, God's blessings remain true. So, we're going to find out what happens with Jacob and we'll read more about his story starting tomorrow. So until then, ladles and jelly spoons, know this, that I am out of here. Have a great day. Bye-bye.
God's thoughts are not our thoughts. Neither should my thoughts be your thoughts. You need to think for yourself.